Hey everyone! In this video, I'll be sharing the process I took to build the FPGVC. I wouldn't consider this a full tutorial, but hopefully this is helpful to some of you so you can avoid any issues I had during the build if you choose to pick one of these up yourself. I ordered my kit from the Funny Playing website and everything arrived in this little box. Taking a look at what's inside, we have the shell and screws, the buttons and the membranes, Another box that comes with some funny playing stickers. An extra ribbon cable. The screen. Game Boy stickers. The battery. The speaker. and the board itself. I'll leave links in the description for the parts that I ordered. My kit did not come with a tri-wing screwdriver, so I had to order one of those as well. Before continuing, I wanted to mention that I'm not entirely sure what the funny playing stickers are for, but judging by their size, it looks like the larger sticker is meant to go on the back of the screen, and the small sticker is meant to go on the front at the bottom. I won't be sticking them to the screen because I personally like the exposed look of the parts and chose a clear shell specifically so that I could see those areas. Funny Playing suggests testing the kit before assembling. I first made sure that the power switch is set to the off position, then went ahead and installed the screen. There's a warning about shorting the cart pins to the screen, so I'm using the stickers as an insulator to prevent any damage. Then I remove the connector cap for the speaker and install that. And lastly, connected the battery and then turned it on. Screen lights up and there's sound, so we're good to take it apart and install it into the shell. I put the D-pad in first, then the A and B buttons next. Followed by the membranes. Next is the speaker gasket. Then install the speaker at an angle to make sure that it didn't get in the way of the main board. Something important to note is that there are six long screws and three short screws. The short ones are Phillips head screws and the long ones are tri-wing screws.
I didn't realize that at first and accidentally used a long screw when I should have used a short one which then damaged the shell slightly. Before screwing down the board, I went ahead and made sure that the buttons all felt good and were pressing correctly. Then use the three short screws to secure the board in place. While screwing these in, I made sure not to over tighten the screws to prevent the shell from cracking. Then double checked the buttons to make sure that they still felt good and were being pressed correctly. After that, I flipped it over and attached the speaker to the board. Followed by tucking in the wires so they don't get pinched by the shell later. Next is the power switch and IR cover. I received an orange and a black IR cover, but used the orange one to keep with the color theme. At this point, it was time to grab the back of the shell and close it up. I went ahead and inspected all of the edges to ensure that nothing got dislodged or misaligned in any way. Since everything looked good, I went ahead and started screwing in the six longer tri-ring screws while making sure to keep the case together with one hand. The magnetic tip of the screwdriver I got helped out with this quite a bit. The last couple of screws are located behind the battery door. I originally wanted to remove the battery contacts, but while I was in the process of doing so, I realized that they could actually be helpful by holding the LiPo battery in place, so I left them in. Next it was time to turn my attention to the screen and get that installed. I started by making sure the connector latch was open and then attached the ribbon cable. Before removing the adhesive covers, I wanted to test to make sure that things were still working, so I left those on for now and went ahead and installed the battery.
After testing and seeing that it worked, I went ahead and removed the adhesive strips. I have since realized that I probably should have left half of the strips on just in case I needed to get back in, but that's a problem for future me. While trying to get the screen in place, I kept running into an issue where the cable would get caught on something, so I ended up using a tiny screwdriver to hold the ribbon cable out of the way while dropping in the screen. Once the screen was in, I tested it one more time before pressing the screen down to fully adhere it to the shell. I was now finally able to fully test it out with an actual game and set it up with the settings that I liked. I won't be going over all the settings for this, since there are existing videos out there that will do a better job of this than I would. I'll link a couple of those videos with timestamps in the description below. Going back to my mishap I made earlier with the long screws, I was able to cover this up with a permanent marker and then dabbed it with some isopropyl alcohol to blend it in until it matched how the other undamaged areas looked. Hopefully, this is something anyone watching this can prevent by learning from my mistake. The next thing I wanted to do was update to the latest firmware. As of the making of this video, there are three versions of the FPGPC. Version 1.0, 1.1, and version 1.11, which is the version I am using. For anyone who built the 1.0 version, the firmware is stored on GitHub which is linked on the funny playing site for this kit. As for the hardware version I'm using, the update files can currently be downloaded directly from the FPGBC page. Once you have the files downloaded, the update itself is actually super easy. You just connect the Game Boy to your PC using a USB-C cable and then turn it on. Drag the update file to the FPGBC, and then wait. Once the update is complete, the Game Boy will automatically restart. As of the making of this video, the latest firmware is version 1.08. Although there are other things that got updates, this version changes the font of the OSD to be much more readable, which by itself is a big upgrade for me. I absolutely love the look and feel of this thing. It was fairly easy to put together, and it took me about 40 minutes to do so, and it probably would have taken me about half that time if I didn't have a camera between me and the build the whole time. I'm very happy with the colors I picked, as I was trying to match the colorway of my limited edition Steam Deck, and it turned out to be pretty close to it. and I was even able to find a case for it from one of the local stores by me to keep it protected while not in use. Well, if you've made it this far into the video, I hope you found something helpful or interesting about my experience building the funny playing Game Boy Color. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.